What's going on guys? John Elder here from codeb.com and in this video, we're going to evaluate our neural network model on our test data set for PyTorch and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to validate our model on our test set. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to evaluate our model on our test data set. Up until now, we've been working with our training data set. Remember, we had a training and a test split. So now we're going to look at the test split stuff. So I've got our file, simple underscore neural network, open in Google Colab. As always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this PyTorch deep learning series. So check it out if you haven't so far. So what we're going to do here is create a little loop and let's say with torch dot no underscore grad. And what this will do is basically turn off back propagation. So we want to send our test data into our model, but we don't need to back propagate and fiddle with the uh, weights and things. We just want to send it right through. So we're going to turn off back propagation. So torch dot no grad basically does that. And then once we do that, we want to Evaluate. So let's go y underscore eval. And this is just going to be model dot forward. And we want to send our data forward through our model. What do we want to send through? Well, this time it's x underscore test. And remember this forward function is back from the very beginning when we created this forward function in our model, right? So while we're up here, just to sort of refresh everything, let's see here. Yeah, when we set up our train test split, remember we set our test size to 20%, right? So our original data starts with zero and it goes down to 149. So we have 150 data points. 20% of those are our test set. The rest is training, right? So now we're dealing with that 20% test set, which is 30, right? 20% of 150 is 30, right? So we're going to be dealing with 30 things. We're going to send that forward through our model right here. And then we're going to get the prediction. Uh, let's say, you know, our X underscore test are features from our test set. And Y underscore eval will be predictions. All right. Okay. So then what we want to do is find the loss or the error, right? So we'll just go criterion and we want to pass in Y underscore eval versus Y underscore test. And here we just want to find the loss or error, same thing, right? Loss error, same deal of Y eval versus Y test. So, okay, we can go ahead and run that. And then if we want to see what that loss is, we could just print it out and we get here 0.1315. So we want to take this number and sort of evaluate it versus this one right here. And here we have 0 0.065. Down here, we have 0 0.131. That's quite a bit off. This is basically 0 0.07. And this is 0 0.13. So this doesn't look great, right? So this should be closer. We really want to see these two numbers almost equal, right? Right around each other, give or take. You know, this is 0 0.065. You might have 0 0.05 all the way up to 0 0.7 ish, somewhere around there, 0 0.8 maybe something like that. So this doesn't look great. So let's dive deeper into this. And let's see how the network did on our test data versus the actual training data. So let's create a variable. I'm just going to call it correct and set it equal to zero. We want to see how many of these we've got correct. Remember, we've got 30 of them, right? So let's go again with torch dot no underscore grad. We want to create a loop. Let's go for, for I and data in and let's enumerate through our X underscore test features. And let's go Y underscore val equals model dot forward. And we want to just put in the data there. I will keep track of the count and data will be the actual data, right? So let's come down here and print some stuff out to the screen. So let's create a little F string and let's go, let's see. First, we want the count, which number it is. So we can go I plus one, because we're looping through here. And then, I don't know, let's just do a little formatting here. And then we want to print out our Y underscore val, but we can't actually print them out because it's a tensor. So we need to convert this to a string. So we'll just wrap all of this in a string. And that looks good. And what this will tell us, this will tell us 
what type of flower, the iris, the iris type or the iris class, I guess, our network thinks it is, right? So, all right, let's do that. And we can just run this. And uh, we have with torn, all right, with torch.nograd, not torn. And you see, we get three things. Remember, we have three different types of flowers, right? So we come up here and we have zero, that's Setosa, one is Versicolor, and two is Virginica. So zero, one, or two. And so that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing this column is zero, this column is one, and this column is two. So the highest number in here is what our network thinks the flower is. So in this case, we have four and six. So this one thinks it's the last one. That was, let's see, Virginica, right? So we can actually print out without looking at this. Let's come up here and let's put a space here and let's put a little tab, backspace tab, and we can just print out Y underscore test um, to the ith one here, whichever one we're on here. And if we do that, we're gonna get that number. So it's gonna be either a zero, a one, or a two. So this one thinks it's a two and there we go. So now if it thinks it's a two, is it actually a two? Well, we can actually try and figure that out. Let's find out correct or not. And I think some of these are gonna be incorrect because this is not very close to this guy right here. So let's see what we got here. So uh, let's go correct or not. And let's go if y underscore val dot arg max dot item, if that equals y underscore test, and then in the thing, oh, I got an extra space there. So this y underscore val dot arg max, I misspelled item. It is Monday morning. <laughs> All right, so this y underscore val dot arg max will tell us our prediction. This y underscore test to the y tells us what the thing actually is, right? So uh, let's go through here. And if this should be a colon here, and then let's just go correct plus equals one, because remember up here, we set that equal to zero. And every time we have a correct thing, we'll just add it up. And then at the end here, it'll tell us how many are correct. So let's just print out and let's create an F string again. We got correct, correct. All right, so if we run this down here, we say, oh, we got 28 correct. So which is what we would sort of expect. You remember there are 30. Some of these are just wrong because we sort of think that because this number is not close to this number. So uh, we're not doing a very good job here. So if we want to see exactly if, you know, is it correct or not, we could, I don't know, let's put a little another tab in here and then just print out this thing right here. Let's see here, uh, there we go. Now, if we shift in and run this, we can see, okay, this one is correct, 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 correct. This one is correct, correct, correct. Same, 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 uh, zero, zero, one, one. Oh, here we go, this number 16, this one is incorrect, All right? Let's see, and then this number 18 is incorrect. And if these numbers are throwing you, we could do a little logic in here if we wanted to. I mean, it's sort of silly, but we could go if y underscore test to the ith number equals zero, then x equals, what was that, Satosa, I think? The first one was Satosa, l if, and then let's just copy this guy. D equals one, then X equals, what was that, Versicolor? Something like that. And then um, else X equals Virginica. And then down in here, instead of printing out this Y test thing, we could just print out X, right? So Virginica, 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 Versicolor, Virginica, etc. Tosa, you know. You can do it like that if you want. I'm gonna come up here and put that back just because I like the numbers. And there we go. So our neural network is, I don't know, doing okay. We got 28 out of 30, correct? Whatever, we're gonna split hairs here. Uh, you're, you might get different numbers here if you use different, let's see, if you use different seeds. So if we come up here and change this to like, I don't know, 32 or something, 
and then come down here to our random state and change our random state to also say 32. And then run all these guys again. If we come down here, let's see. Yeah, so now our loss is 0 0.05 and our last guy was 0 0.08. That's a lot closer. And then subsequently we get 30 out of 30, correct? So, you know, it just depends on the random state you use at the beginning. So as long as it's close to 30, we're pretty happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 41 because I like 41. <laughs> Damn the torpedoes. I like 41. And then I'll change it back here as well run all these guys again and we get that same sort of off in our test data but still pretty good 28 out of 30 not too bad and that's how you evaluate on your test data so 28 out of 30 not particularly bad not particularly great but okay uh, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 170,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codingme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.